Hey everyone, welcome to the Oakley Roots YouTube channel. My name is Jessica. Today we're doing another swoon pattern. I know, I love swoon patterns. They're so good. So this is not only another swoon pattern, but it's another free swoon pattern. They offer like a lot of free patterns and this is a good one. So the name of this pattern is the Summer Festival Bag. And you know, it's funny because I don't see a whole lot of people making this bag. I'm part of the Facebook group. I searched it on Instagram to kind of like see what kind of style people are going for with this bag. And there's not a whole lot out there. You guys, this is a great bag. It's a really, really cute bag. So let me show you the bag real quick and then we'll talk about it a little bit. So here is my version of the Summer Festival bag. Now this is the large size. There are two sizes. There's the large and there's the mini. I made the large. Today, you and I were making the mini. So this is the large size, and you can see for this, I used quilt blocks. I made these beautiful ghosty quilt blocks. It's from Then Came June, and I'll have a link for the pattern down below. And it's a quilt pattern, but I uh, I have a lot of quilts. <laughs> I just didn't, I didn't want another quilt. But I really loved these blocks that I made, so I decided that I would use them in bags. So you can see it's got a nice big side here, nice big strap, and then it's got these side pockets here, and then let's take out. And then on the inside, you also have a couple of side pockets. So, I mean, it's just, it's a really cute bag. I don't think you're going to be able to get a good look of it with me wearing it right now. But you can see it's got a nice crossbody. It's nice big on the side. Now, it's a big bag. Like, the large size is a really large size. I'm going to also be using these exact same quilt blocks. I mean, not these ones, because these ones are on the bag. But I'm going to be using these same ghost quilt blocks on the smaller size bag today so we can kind of see how the bag size difference is. So this is the Summer Festival bag, and it is a quick, easy sew. There is no hardware. No hardware, no zippers, no hardware. So before we get too much in the pattern, let me just remind you that if you haven't already, please consider subscribing below. As of today, which is August 29th, we have over 400 subscribers. That's incredible. Over 400 subscribers like that. Ooh, you don't understand every single time we reach another few subscribers, we have like a party in my house. It is a very exciting experience for the entire family. So I just wanna thank you, everybody who has subscribed and everybody who's watching, everybody who has liked, commented, emailed me, everything. I really love the sewing community and I love being able to be a part of it and I love being able to show you guys stuff because I like teaching and I like giving things for free because I don't like selling things. So this is a great platform for me. So if you haven't already, please subscribe down below, give this video a like. If at any point you like the video, leave any questions or comments or suggestions in the comment section down below. Today's run through is going to be following the pattern. This is how we make the bag. There will be a second part to this video in the future where we make some changes to it. We, I have some pretty cool ideas for how to modify this bag a little bit. Um, and that will be in a separate video. So make sure you're subscribed so you know when that video comes out. So before we get sewing, let me just flash up my disclaimer whew, right here. Uh, this pretty much just says that I asked permission from Swoon to film tutorials without giving away any sort of proprietary information regarding the pattern. They did not ask me to do this. We are not partners. I don't receive anything in return for doing these videos. All I have is the permission to provide the tutorial. So just so you know, this is coming from me to you because I love swoon patterns, I love swoon bags, and I really like sharing with you how to make these bags. So when I started the pattern, the one thing I noticed about this, and this might be the reason why a lot of people aren't making this, is that it requires a lot of fabric. Like a lot of fabric. And a lot of like continuous cuts of fabric. So yeah, it requires one yard of exterior, a half a yard, of contrasting fabric and one and a quarter yard of lining fabric and then four and a half yards of interfacing. But four and a half yards of interfacing, that's crazy. That's a lot of fabric and interfacing. It's okay, the reason it's a lot is because it's a big bag. But here's the thing, I am a scrappy quilter and my quilters out there, the scrappy quilters out there know what that means. That means I don't have large cuts of fabric. I have a lot of fabric, but they're all smaller cuts. I don't do well with patterns like this because I just don't have the fabric for it. And, and I'm just, I buy fabric because when I see it, I love it, I buy it. I don't tend to buy fabric for a particular bag or for a particular quilt for a particular project. I just don't, but that's okay. 
because this pattern, you can make it scrappy. You can totally make this pattern scrappy. And I'll show you, I made it scrappy by using quilt block, by using different types of fabric for the pockets. With regards to the interfacing, you can cut back on that amount if you use a heavier fabric like canvas or duck cloth. Something that is a lot heavier, you're not really gonna need to interface that because the interfacing is just providing support to the thinner material like quilt cotton. So if you have a heavier fabric like this, this is canvas, I didn't interface the canvas, this outside here. So you can see there's a lining piece here for the pocket and then there's the canvas. And I, I just, I didn't interface the canvas because it's already pretty thick and I just didn't feel like I needed to. Also, I was running low on interfacing. All right, so let's get started. So before you get started, you're gonna need to cut your templates out. Here are mine for the smaller sized bag. And you can see it's a pretty long template. Now you can, Piece this together using all kinds of scraps because what you're gonna be doing is interfacing it with SF-101 or Woven Fuse and that's gonna hold it all together. So this makes it possible to use scraps to build the bag. So you're gonna have your exterior, your pocket, and your side panels. From the lining fabric, you're gonna need two cuts just like this using the big template. And you're also gonna need your exterior pieces using the same template. All of these are lined with SF-101. I'm using these ghost blocks again, since it's a smaller bag, they are cut down a little bit. So you need two exterior and two lining cuts using the template for the main panel. From the side panel template, you're gonna need two lining pieces and two contrasting fabrics. So here are my contrasting fabrics. I interfaced all four of these pieces with SF-101. On my previous bag, I used a very heavy canvas, and so I did not interface those with SF-101. For this one, this is a little bit thinner of a upholstery fabric. Well, this is a thinner fabric, so I, I interfaced it. So you'll need your side panels. And the last thing you're gonna need are your pocket panels. So you're gonna need contrasting pocket panels. This is what they look like. You're going to need your lining pocket panels, two of them. All four of these are interfaced with SF-101. And then you'll need an additional four pocket pieces, but these are not interfaced with SF-101. For these ones, I just used a different fabric to keep it scrappy. So this is all you need. The amount of things is actually a pretty small amount. You don't have any hardware, you don't have any zippers. You just need fabric, a lot of fabric and interfacing. So once you have that, you're ready to sew it together. And the stitching together is actually pretty simple. So let's walk through that. The first step is constructing the pockets. You have two contrasting pockets that are interfaced with SF-101 and two lining pockets that are interfaced with 101. You're going to take your four non-interface pieces and sew them to the four interface pieces. So let's start with this one. This is my interface lining piece. And this is my non-interfaced pocket panel. You're gonna do right sides together, line them up just like so, and then you're gonna pin along the top curve and the bottom seam. We're gonna do this for all four pieces. We're going to pin a non-interface piece to an interface piece for each pocket. So now that we have all four of our pockets pinned, we're gonna take this to the sewing machine and we're gonna sew along the top curved edge at a quarter of an inch seam allowance. And we're also gonna sew along the bottom straight edge at a quarter of an inch seam allowance. We're gonna do this for all four pockets. So we have our pockets sewn using a quarter of an inch seam allowance along the top and the bottom of each one. So now we wanna turn this right side out, but before we do that, we wanna make sure that this curve stays nice after we turn it. So we're gonna cut a couple little slits into it, just like this. And you just go up to the stitches, but not, not cutting the stitches. So I just go around just like that. So that way when I turn it out, it'll curve nicer. So flip it right side out. And just use your finger to get in there so that you can finger press it a little bit and then do the curved side. I like to kind of raise it up like a smile and then finger press it down. All right, so now let's press this with the iron just to make sure it stays nice and flat. And so the reason we press this with the iron is because we're gonna go back and top stitch over this. But if you don't give it a good press before you top stitch it, the seams like to kind of fold in on themselves and then you have some, some wonky stuff going on. And also the block doesn't measure right, which you need it to, so you can apply it to the bag later. So pressing is just a preemptive step to what we're gonna do next to secure it nicely in place. 
All right, and then we're just gonna do this for the other three pockets. So now we have our pockets all pressed and we're gonna take them to the machine and we're gonna top stitch along the curved edge only. I'm using a 40 weight cotton thread by Aurifel and I'm gonna be using a three millimeter stitch length. So I'm gonna to go to my machine and give a quick top stitch to the curved edge of each pocket and I'll be right back. All right, so you can see all of my pockets are now top stitched, if you can see there. And we're ready for the next step. So the next step is to add these pockets to our side panels. So I'm gonna start with the lining. So I have my lining pocket. And here are my lining side panels. So let's take one side panel to begin with. We're gonna mark a line that's three and three quarter inches parallel to the bottom of the side panel. So I'll get my ruler out. And I'll find three and three quarter inches. Now you can use your chalk pen here and mark it, or you can just take your lining out sign panel and line it up with this line. Or the bottom of the pocket should be the same width as where you are on the side panel. So this to here should be the same. This should not. Your pocket needs to be wider at the top. If your pocket is the same width as this is right here, you've done something wrong. It's supposed to be wider. Okay, so I just line it up like that and then I remove the ruler. Now I'm going to take a few pins and I'm just going to pin the bottom of the pocket. Now, to deal with the sides, we want the raw edge of the pocket to line up with the raw edge of the side panel. But they are different sizes, as you can tell. So we just pick it up and we use our fingers to line it up. You can use pins for this, but I do prefer to use clips on the edges. So just line it up, so just wiggle it. So your pocket is gonna create like a bowl effect, which makes it nice and convenient to put stuff in it. When you're throwing something in your bag, you can very quickly slip it in your pocket. And we'll do the same for the other side. Just line it up with the edge, like that. All right, and there is one of our lining side panels with the pocket. Now let's do the same for the other lining side panel. So there's our second lining panel done. Now we're going to do the exact same thing for the contrasting side panels and their pockets. All right, so now I'm going to take all four of my side panels to the sewing machine and I'm going to sew on the pockets going down the side and then the bottom and then back up the other side. I'm going to be using a three millimeter stitch length at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. And I'm just going to go along this side, down the bottom and back up the other. All right, so you can see we have our pockets attached to our contrasting sides and our lining sides. And what's nice about this is that they stick out a little bit this makes them a lot more usable in the end and also the bag will curve just a bit so they don't stick out a tremendous amount. They stick out just like that. It's a really, really nice finish for a pocket. So now we're going to start assembling the whole bag. To start the assembly step, take both of your main exterior pieces. So these are my ghosties. And you're going to flip them right sides together, lining up all of the edges. And for now, we're just going to sew along this bottom right here. So line up the bottom pieces here. And the bottom pieces are the shorter, thin pieces, obviously not the long pieces. So give this a clip. And you're gonna take this to your sewing machine using a standard two and a half millimeter stitch. You're gonna do a half of an inch seam allowance. So let's go do that. So after you've stitched it at half an inch seam allowance, we're gonna open it up and we're gonna press this seam open. So open your seam up, push it down, and give it a quick press with your iron. So now to secure this stitch in place, we're gonna top stitch it. We're gonna do a top stitch a quarter of an inch from this seam on this side and on this side, on both sides, a quarter of an inch away from the middle seam. And you can just use a three millimeter stitch length for this. All right, so now we're probably at the hardest part of this whole pattern and it's, it's pretty simple. We're gonna, it's pretty simple, I'll show you. So now you're going to take your exterior pieces right side up with the seam you just you just created in the middle. 
take a contrasting side panel and you're going to fold it in half and we want to mark the halfway mark on the bottom. So the bottom is the flatter edge, not the smile, it's the flatter edge. So find the halfway mark and give it a little mark. I'm just using a mechanical pencil. And what you want to do is you want to line this up. So you can see I have my exterior here and then I have my seam right here with my two exterior pieces connected. I'm going to line up this halfway mark right on that seam and I'm going to clip it in place. Now I have this top corner here of my side panel and I'm going to line up this top corner. And remember, this is all right sides together, right side of contrast with right side of exterior. And I'm going to line up this corner with this corner on my ghostie. See how that just fits in perfectly like that? Clip it in place. And now I'm going to go down the entire side and clip it in place. Now you might notice at some points it doesn't quite want to cooperate with you. That's okay. Just pin it as much as you can. I like to use clips because we are starting to get into thicker layers of fabric here. And clips just are much easier to work with sometimes than those pins that want to fight you. So I'm going to flip it over and continue going. So you see this is where it gets a little tricky. As long as you just work about an inch at a time, you can manipulate it to match up. best you can. This will even out at the sewing machine as well. All right. Clip the end. All right. So half that side is done. So now we're going to do the other side. So again, make sure you have everything right sides together. Grab your other corner of your, your from your other ghosty block or your other, I keep calling it ghosty blocks, but it, your corner from your other exterior piece and right sides together, line them up, give it a clip. And then work your way down the side as just like you did on the other side. So now that you have your side panel clipped on, we're going to take this to the sewing machine. All right, so we're at the sewing machine and we have everything pinned in place. Now when we sew this, we want our exterior side to be face up on the sewing machine. So that means our side panel is going to be face down on the sewing machine. So we're going to sew it like this. This has to do with how the curves are on each side. This side where the ghosties are, the exterior piece is going to stretch a little bit better around and that's going to make it a much easier for us to sew this thing together. And I'm sorry guys about the nails. I totally meant to um, take them off and I forgot. Exterior side up, side panel side down. Sew it. And remember, we're using a half of an inch seam allowance. And if you've sewn curves with me before, you know my advice is to not worry about any of the stuff that's past your needle or any of the things that's not an inch before your needle. Just focus on what is about one inch in front of your needle and you're going to be able to manage these curves much easier. have our exterior pieces connected to one side panel. Before we turn this out, we're going to clip these edges a little bit. So now let's turn this right side out. Oh, this is a really cute size. This is going to be nice. So what we want to do now is we're going to top stitch along where we just sewed. But before we do that, we want to make sure we press this big old seam to the right side. And we're going to press it to the side panel side. So let's get our iron and give it a quick press before we take it to the machine and top stitch. Yeah, this is a pretty challenging step if you're trying to keep everything flat because you have it all curved. So I just don't worry about it too much. 
do your best to get these pressed. You're just trying to make it, the whole point of this is to make it easier to top stitch. So this is not supposed to be the hard step. This is just supposed to make another step a little bit easier. Don't kill yourself over this part. All right, so now let's go back to the machine where we are gonna top stitch on the side panel. So the top stitching will not be on the exterior piece. It's gonna be on the side panel, quarter of an inch away from the seam. And we're just gonna go nice and slow and just kind of feel for the seam to make sure that we're including this big old seam allowance in with the top stitching, right? It's what we're doing. We're trying to make sure it's cleaned up in here. All right, so I'm gonna set my stitch length to three millimeters and I'm going to lay out my bag. Now we're gonna do this nice and slow because we don't wanna accidentally get other pieces of the bag included in our stitching. And always feeling right before you get to the needle, always feeling to make sure that that seam is underneath the side panel. If it's not, get your hand under there before it gets to the needle and work it so that it is included in this top stitch. Look at the bag. We just got done top stitching. Let's turn it out. So this is where we are so far, and I think this is going to be a stinking cute bag. Ah, I'm so excited. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the exact same thing with the other side, with the other side contrasting panel. I'm going to attach it on to the open side. And then I'm gonna put the two side panels on the lining as well. So I just need to do this exact same step three more times, and then we're on to final assembly. So I'm gonna zoom through that for you. Okay, so this is where we are with the exterior. We have both sides connected to the exterior, and everything is top stitched, and it has a nice bag shape. So now we just have to do that exact same process for the lining. Remember the first step is attaching the bottom pieces together with a half an inch seam allowance and top stitching at a quarter of an inch after you press it open. All right, I have my lining completed. I will say that adding the second side panel on the lining and the exterior for the small size is more difficult than the large size. And you can see I even have some puckering down here. So to finish the bag, you're gonna take your lining and you're gonna put your lining wrong side out. And then you're going to take your exterior right side out and we're just gonna tuck it in to the lining, matching up side panels with side panels. So it's just, I have my side panel on the top here and I have an exterior side panel on the top, so I'm just gonna tuck it in here. And it might be more of a shove and less of a tuck, but that's okay. However you have to get the bag in the bag. It's messy, but it's fine. What we're gonna do is we're gonna match up all of our seams. So here are my seams for my side panel for my lining, and here are my seams for my side panel for my exterior. I'm just gonna match them up and clip them together. Just like that. Start with the edges first and then work on the curve. All right, I'm gonna do the same for the other side. Now that I have my side panels pinned, the rest of it, it's just, you can see it just kind of falls together. So we're just gonna clip the straps all the way up and then we're gonna start marking where we need to start and stop sewing. For now, let's just clip it all together. So we're gonna sew one side at a time. You can see we have one long side that goes down the strap, around the bag, and then up the other side of the strap. So we're gonna start one side at a time. So you're gonna wanna mark four inches from the end of each strap. So I'm just gonna go over four inches here. Mark right here. This is where we're gonna start and stop stitching. So four inches on this end of the strap, go down to the other end of the strap that I'll be sewing right now mark another four inches. There we go. So I'm gonna start here 
and I'm gonna make sure I backstitch at the start and the stop. And I'm gonna sew along the edge using a half of an inch seam allowance. Once I get all the way to this end, I'm going to stop. And then I'm going to do the second side. Don't move on to the second side yet. Just do this one side. Okay, you can see we have one edge completely sewn, leaving the four inches on the end open. And now we're gonna do the same with the other side, except we're also going to leave an opening along one of the sides here, not on the side panel. So we want a five inch opening along one of the straps. This is just gonna be how you turn it inside out. Okay, and then continue on marking your four inches on the ends of the straps. And we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna do another half of an inch seam allowance, back stitch at every mark. So we're gonna go all the way around here. So then once I get to the mark for my opening, I'm gonna stop and I'm going to back stitch. And I'm going to leave this open and then I'll start again here and backstitch and continue on until my other mark where I will stop and backstitch. So now our bag is all sewn together. Before we turn it inside out, we're going to cut it down to about a quarter of an inch seam allowance only where there are stitches. So that's the rule. If there are stitches, you can cut it down. If there are no stitches, don't cut it. So where there are stitches, I'm just going to trim it down to a quarter of an inch of a seam allowance. All right, so we have our bag. Doesn't look right, does it? Dad, such a dad joke, huh? All right, let's turn it out gently. Find your opening, take your hand. Ooh, it's a small area. <laughs> and we're just gonna slowly work our way at getting it out. This is going to be tricky. Honestly, this is a very tight area. Alright, so we have most of it turned out. The thing you want to make sure you do in this step is turn out the handles really well because these are going to be a little tricky to top stitch if they're not turned out super well. So take the time here to really pull out those seams, flatten them out, get your iron and press them. Because this is the mini bag, these are a little bit trickier to pull out. So if you have any sort of a turning tool, that would probably be helpful right now. Okay, all right, so we pull it out. You can see we still have our raw ends of our straps. I'm actually just gonna push this out with my fingers while I can get my hand in here. And I'm going to clip them until I can get to my iron. And what I'm doing is I'm clipping this seam close. See, I'm just like feeling it out and then I'm clipping the seam nice and flat. This way I can press it, but I can also just top stitch it and I'll be okay. And I'm gonna do the same for the other side. So what I'm doing is I'm kind of like tucking the whole thing over my middle finger because it's the longest finger so I can get down to the bottom and then just feel out these seams here and pin it so that they're nice because if you don't, if you don't like push out the seams and then top stitch it correctly, you end up with wonky lines. I know this step takes longer and you're like, you can see the bag being done and you're like, I don't even care. I just want to finish it. But then, you know, if you don't make these nice and even, you're going to be disappointed with yourself. I mean, maybe you won't, but I would be, I would be disappointed with myself because I worked, you know, I worked pretty hard on this. And I'd really like it to turn out nicely. So now, tuck your lining, if you haven't already, tuck your lining into your bag. It's gonna give you a really good idea of what your finished bag looks like. And it's a really cool shape. I like this shape. I'd buy a bag like this. So, your opening that you left, go ahead and fold down those edges that you left nice and long. What I like to do is just kind of fold one end down and clip it. 
and then I'll fold the other end down to meet it and just include it in those clips. So we have it clipped shut. We have a lot of clips. All right, before we finish up this with a top stitch, we need to attach our ends. So right sides together, lining, clip the top or pin it. We're gonna sew it at a quarter inch seam allowance, just this end. All right, so now that we have that done, we're gonna do the exterior edges. So we have our exterior fabric. Fold those right side together and pin, and we're gonna sew these together at a quarter of an inch seam allowance as well. So now that we have both of these ends sewn together, the lining to the lining and the exterior to the exterior, you're gonna press the seams open. So the next step is to just close up these holes. So you're gonna fold it down. I like to start in the middle and fold down half of an inch and pin. And then I just pull the opposite end just kind of give it a tug and then clip it. And then I'll do the same for the other side. Just kind of tug it a little bit to get a nice flat edge here. So that was the lining side. Now I'll do the same for the exterior side. And when I do the exterior side, I'm really just kind of pulling it and then just adding it to the clips that I already have on my lining. See? All right, and then do the same for the other side. To finish up this bag, it's all top stitching. So what I like to do, you can press this, you can take this to your iron and press your seams where the exterior and the lining come together because see they're kind of flump, fluffy, frumpy right here. I prefer to just use clips. I, I don't like battling with my iron too much on these curved pieces. So I just use clips. I use my fingers to finger press it and then I clip it. You can see I have all of my edges clipped. So now what you're gonna do is you're just gonna top stitch. So we're gonna use a three millimeter stitch length and we're gonna use an eighth of an inch top stitch. You're gonna top stitch around the entirety of one side and then the entirety of the other side. All right, we're done. I backed on up a little bit so you could see the full bag. So this is the bag, this is the mini size that we just created. This is using a ghost block. This quilt block was 10 and a half inches by 10 and a half by 10 and a half inches to begin with. So this is what it looks like in the mini version and I'll put it on so you can kind of see. See, this is the mini version. It's a very, very cute bag. We've got these great pockets on the side and then we've got the same pockets on the inside. And now the larger bag, here are our bags side by side. See, so the larger bag is good for this, right? Now, I think the larger bag would be great for Halloween, trick-or-treating. Taking your kids out, trick-or-treating, they get a bunch of candy, they need to dump it so that they can, you know, refuel. Have them dump it in here, a couple secret pockets, take the stuff you want, you know, the Snickers, obviously, put them in the secret pockets, so that way later when the kids go through, you got the good stuff. These are really, really cute bags. I'm surprised more people don't make this pattern. But hopefully, you will, and you'll love it too. So thanks so much for stopping by. Make sure you subscribe down below if you haven't already. Give this video a like if at any point you liked it. Any comments or questions, leave them down below. I try to respond to each and every one of you. If you're watching this, it means we made it past Hurricane Dorian. Get out there and make something. Bye!